Hey everyone, uh, Peter from Argo. So we've just put out a new RNS, a new press release that outlines our climate strategy. Uh, there's also a new section on our website uh, and a report that's downloadable. I'm going to walk you through the report in a minute. Uh, but first I want to just talk about why we've done this, why we have a climate strategy and why it's important. Um, I think a lot of you know that the, the UN just put out a, uh, a climate report recently, just last week, uh, and it says that, that you know, humans are unequivocally warming the planet, and we're in the kind of last stages of when we're actually able to do something. So we feel like as a company uh, and as humans on this planet, it's important for us to do something. It's part of the, the Argo company ethos, uh, and so we have a strategy and a plan that we've announced uh, to shareholders, to stakeholders. Uh, and, and also to be more transparent about our energy use and, and about how uh, we're doing things to mitigate that energy use. So there's still a window when humans can have a, an impact on the climate and it's important for us to take action. And, and as, as a company, Argo is taking action. So I'm gonna walk you through now the, the report. It's the 2020 report, but it also has a, a lot of pieces having to do with 2021 and, and projections moving forward. Uh, it's 18 pages, so I'm, I'm gonna move kind of quickly and obviously you can download it yourself or you can follow along. So the main highlight of the report is that Argo is now climate positive, which means we have gone beyond climate neutrality or being net zero. We are actually uh, carbon negative is another way of saying it. You'll, you'll see lots of other companies starting to use this language. IKEA, for instance, uh, is now considers themselves climate positive. Uh, and, and at the end of the day, it means that we are reducing more greenhouse gas emissions then our value chain emits. Uh, and, and specifically, uh, the scope one, two, three emissions. And I'll walk you through in a minute how we're doing that and give you a little bit more background about what, what scope one, two, three emissions are. The second main highlight of the report is that we've built some new partnerships, uh, most significantly with uh, the United Nations Climate Neutral Now Initiative. Uh, we've taken the pledge, and so we're going to be measuring, reducing, contributing, and reporting our emissions on a yearly basis. Uh, and those are two really significant things. We are the first uh, cryptocurrency mining company to do either of them, to be either climate positive or uh, taking the, the, the UN Climate Neutral Now pledge. Um, and, and it's not the, the only thing we're doing. As, as many of you know, we've been talking about climate and climate strategy for, for a long time. This process uh, that, we've just, that we're just releasing now, the strategy we're, we're releasing now, we've been working on for about six months. Um, and uh, we, we've been working with Guidehouse, which is a U.S. consulting firm that has that has built this strategy with us. Um, and and this kind of roadmap in the report kind of just outlines, you know, the things that we've done over the last uh, over the last six, well, really over over, la over the the history of the company, but specifically o over the last you know six months or so. Um, one of the most significant things that we did with Guidehouse was we had them assess our emissions for 2020. So that is measuring, you know, what the scope one, two, and three emissions are. And scope one emissions are emissions that are direct greenhouse gas emissions. And, and we don't really have any of those. Those are as if we were, you know, would be creating, um, you know, a, a, a emissions coming straight out of our, our, our facilities. And that's not something that Argo really does. That's more of like a power plant or, you know, a large factory that, that's putting emissions into the air. The scope two emissions are greenhouse gas emissions that come from uh, indirect. So in our case, pretty much all of our scope two emissions come from electricity generation from utilities that we are tapping into, specifically in the United States, because uh, in Canada, we're using hydropower. In the US, at our co-hosted facilities with Core Scientific, uh, it's, a, it's a mix of energy. 50% uh, of it is, is from uh, clean sources and 50% is, is from um, carbon emitting sources. So that, that was the, the, the main, that's, that's where the main gist of our, of our 2020 emissions come from. Uh, and scope three emissions are from the value chain. In our, in our case, specifically the supply chain, you know, for us primarily, it's the uh, fuel that's emitted when we're transporting machines from Asia to North America. And those, those, are, those are the scope three emissions. So we've done the, the full analysis of the 2020 emissions. You can see most of it, most of our emissions from 2020 come from electricity usage. Um, and there's a little bit of, of scope three emissions as, as well. Um, and then we also did projections for, for 2021 uh, based on you know, what we're doing in 2020. We looked at our projections, how much, uh, you know, how many emissions we'd have in, in, in 2021 um, and kind of 
based any future offsets or mitigation measures against those projections. Uh, and this is the math for the for the 2021 uh, uh, emission projections, which again is is fairly straightforward math. And in this case, uh, Core Scientific, who as you guys know is our U.S. hosting partner, um, has already mitigated their 2021 uh, greenhouse gas emissions. They have used uh, some offsets, renewable energy credits. So for 2021, uh, it's only scope three emissions um, that are projected to to be used by Argo. So. We've done the math, and then what is the actions that are to be taken you know, as a consequence of that math? Uh, the first is that we've bought renewable energy credits for 2020 and projected 2021. As I said, 2021 from Core, 2020 from us, which means any cryptocurrency that we've mined going back to 2020 could now be considered uh, 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 carbon neutral, or in, our, in this case, carbon negative. We've also bought verified emission reductions uh, for 2020 and 2021 for our scope three emissions. Uh, and we'll walk through what exactly those are. Both renewable energy credits and verified emission reductions are a recognized and acceptable way of, you know, this kind of transitionary phase we're in, uh, where we are trying to do our best as a, you know, corporate citizen, and we're offsetting any emissions that we use. Obviously, the goal for the company in long term is to be emission free. Uh, to be mining in places where we're using only renewable power and, and transporting our machines using you know, non-emitting sources. But that's not realistic right now. In the short and medium term, it's just not realistic. And so the, the second best thing is to use renewable energy credits and verified emission reductions. And these are, are recognized. We've, we've really tapped into like the highest standard uh, of, of these particular type of programs. Uh, and they make a difference. Renewable energy credits have a big impact on being able to develop more renewable power in North America. And verified emission reductions allow projects in different parts of the world to be successful and, and, and are important funding for those projects. So we bought both of those and that is what has taken us to become climate positive or carbon negative for 2020 and 2021. Obviously, you know, we're also developing the Helios site, which is using renewable power uh, and going to be, you know, tapped into a particular part of the grid where there's a ton of renewable power. And many of you who, who follow the company closely would know that's something we talk about a lot. So the next few pages in the report outline the REC and the VER purchases. For the REC purchases, we have focused on North American RECs. Um, it, for 2020, hydro and wind RECs. And for 2021, again, CORE purchased them. And those were uh, wind green E RECs. So for the VER purchases, our uh, contributions there will go towards two projects. And we've split the contribution 50% and 50%. 50% is going to a project in North America and the other 50% is going to a project in China. And again, um, these are specific projects. Uh, the one is the, the Doe Mountain Forestry Project uh, that is trying to have an impact on, on uh, sustainable habitat. Both of the VER projects are designed to help reduce emissions. Uh, this forestry project does that by providing a natural carbon sink a natural form of carbon capture, as it were, um, and keeping forestry land, keeping as much forestry land standing as possible, achieves that. And the other project in China is a waste heat project um, in the uh, Sichuan province. We thought both of those were appropriate, given that we are working in North America using machines coming from China. Again, the VERs that we have purchased are very well respected. One is from uh, the gold standard certification folks, and the other is the American Carbon Registry. All right, on to the last part of the report, which talks about our partnerships. Um, we have now signed the United Nations Climate Neutral Now initiative. Uh, we've taken the pledge, and essentially that it's a, that's a statement on Argo's part to um, measure our greenhouse gas emissions, try to reduce them, and to report annually on our emissions. Um, and, and again, this is we're the first cryptocurrency mining company to do this. I think maybe the first crypto company full stop to do this. Um, so it's, a, it's an important initiative um, and it's a way for us to really kind of set a high standard for other folks in the space. And the second thing we've done is we've, we've joined the Renewable Energy Buyers Alliance and that's going to help us to tap in to the entire world of North American renewable energy and make sure that we're, we're engaging with that world in, in the right way. Other things we've done this year, which we've talked a lot about, uh, is signing the Crypto Climate Accord and being the first cryptocurrency miners to do that. 
and secondly to uh, announce the creation of TerraPool, which is going to be the world's first Bitcoin mining pool powered by clean energy. So what does the future look like for Argo? It's not going to stop here. We've committed to putting out these yearly reports. This is the first one. I think it's a really good step. But we're also looking at other initiatives in energy efficiency, in reducing e-waste, in the use of waste heat with, in partnership with local municipalities. We're exploring carbon capture uh, and also s trying to support the industry with sustainability standards. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. That's the strategy. That's the report. We're really proud to be taking a leadership position around climate in the cryptocurrency space. We'd encourage other crypto miners, other cryptocurrency companies to do the same. Thanks again. Onwards and upwards.